And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a um, baked Italian crumb-coated chicken tender. We're going to have some Greek roasted potatoes to go alongside that and an asparagus with a crunchy onion topping. And it could not be simpler or more delicious. It's so easy. The first thing you're going to need to do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Now, in this pan, you will need a baking dish that to where your chicken tenders fit in there kind of snugly. Now, I'm using tenders, but if you wanted to use like the... Um, boneless, skinless chicken thighs, you could totally do that. Or you could use chicken breasts. You could use any cut of chicken that you would want. You just would have to adjust the baking time. I use tenders because they're quick, they're easy, and everybody in my family likes them. So that's what we're going to use. The first thing we want to do there is take some salt and pepper and just kind of sprinkle the chicken with it. Get it out of there and kind of, that's plenty. As much or as little as you like. I was, the other day I was home, well about a couple weeks ago, and I was trying to use up a box of crackers that I had bought, bought for another purpose, and I thought, ooh, I think I know what to do. And that's how this recipe came about. This is one sleeve of vegetable, garden vegetable flavored these happen to be Ritz crackers, but you could use, you know, any kind of a garden vegetable flavored cracker. If you don't have the flavored cracker, you could use the plain cracker crumbs, but I would add maybe a little bit of, say, a, an Italian seasoning blend or something like that, but you don't need that if you've got the roasted vegetable crackers. This is one sleeve, and what I'm going to do is take my little meat mallet and make cracker crumbs out of it. Okay. And to that, I'm going to add some grated Parmesan cheese. Now, I made up my little meal kit because this is what I do at home. When I have time, whatever day of the week I go to the grocery store, I try to have time at home to get my chopping done and get everything prepped and ready to go for the, at least the first few days after that because it's hard sometimes when you work and, and go back and forth to have the time when you get home to get it ready. But if you've got your little meal kits together in your Ziploc bag, it goes together like that and you can cook any night of the week. Recipes like this. Now, you will also need just some purchased, I use Italian salad dressing, but you could use any kind of a vinegary dressing that you want. And you want about half a cup. And I'm going to just put some of the Italian dressing over top of the chicken tenders. And you can, if you want to let this marinate for like an hour, you can. You could even, I wouldn't do this more than a couple of hours ahead of time because I'm using tenders and they're gonna, you know, of course, absorb it a lot quicker. But if you were using a thicker cut of meat, you could do this, say the night before and let it um, just marinate overnight, but at least an hour if you want to, but you don't have to. I'm busy today and I don't have time to let it marinate. You don't have to. And then it couldn't be simpler. We're just gonna take our cracker crumbs mixed with our cheese and we're gonna put this just right over top of the chicken tenders in a nice even layer. Just spread it out. You want everything coated nice and evenly. Wash your hands, even though I don't think I touched any of the chicken. I don't want to take that chance. 
wash your hands. Anytime you touch raw poultry, remember you do need to wash your hands. And then take either some olive oil or canola oil, vegetable oil, some type of oil. And I'm drizzling. I love these little squeezy containers because you can control the amount of oil that you're using. And you just want to kind of put that drizzle alight. That's probably in total three tablespoons or so, um, or teaspoons, not tablespoons, but maybe three teaspoons or so, drizzled over top of the chicken. And then pop it in the oven at 400 degrees and it needs to bake for, I would say, 30 to 35 minutes or so until the chicken is cooked through and that top topping is nice and golden. And the reason that I like to mix the cheese with it is that cheese not only adds tremendous flavor because Parmesan cheese is a really potent flavored cheese that's one of my, if not my favorite, but it also will kind of caramelize and it'll add a little bit of texture to it. It'll get that crunchy golden pop to it and it's really, really good. That needs to bake for about 30 minutes or so or until it's cooked through. And in the meantime, we can get started on our next side dish. Again, I have it all prepped up, have everything in the little baggies and I need my little um, meat mallet. These are the canned French fried onions that everybody puts on top of a uh, green bean casserole but they're delicious for so many other things. And I use them all the time for a lot of different things because I think they have a lot of flavor and they're just simply delicious. We want to have some fresh asparagus. This is one of those times that you will need fresh asparagus. It's really delicious. I love it and, and it, it's, it's really healthy and it's really good for you and it's so quick cooking. And there's one tip I do want to show you or tell you about. When you're buying asparagus, rinse it off. Asparagus can be tiny, can be very, very thin, and it can be very, very thick. These are a little more on the thicker end of things. I'd say they're about as big around as my finger. Uh, I don't really like the little thin, thin, thin asparagus. I don't think it has enough flavor to it. You want to cut off about the bottom inch, inch and a half. Some people suggest holding a spear of asparagus and then snapping it, but I think that wastes way too much of it. And so I don't want to do that. I want to just, um, I cut off about an inch or so. Just line them up like little soldiers, the bottoms all together. The tops will be different flavors. And cut off about an inch, inch and a half to where you see the tender, you see how um, good and crisp and tender it is in there and it's really good. The key to buying good asparagus is look at the tip. This is the tip part. You want the bud end of this to be tightly closed, not opening, not wilted, just tightly closed and it's good to go that way. All right, you want to take again some olive oil and drizzle over top. Kind of coat it. Add a little bit of salt and pepper to the mixture. As much or as little as you like. Be careful with the salt because those can be salty, the little French fried onions. All right. And I like to just kind of line them up like that. And then when my chicken's been in the oven for about 15 minutes, I will put that in there because this only takes, you know, about 15 minutes to roast and then we'll top it with the rest of it. I'm going to take a quick break. Well, let me tell you what the topping is going to be. We've got our onions and we're going to add again some grated Parmesan cheese to it. And I just, to clean it, save another bowl, I'm just going to mix that together in the baggie. Don't put this on quite yet, just set it to the side. We're going to roast the asparagus, and when that comes out of the oven is when we'll put that on and put it back in the oven. I'm just going to clean up. When I come back, we're going to get our potatoes ready to go in the oven. We'll check our chicken, and we'll proceed on with our asparagus. I'll be back in just a few minutes.
All righty, now our chicken is in the oven. Our asparagus is prepped, but we've not put it in the oven yet. We're gonna get some potatoes going because they need to bake a little bit too. I have here just a couple of pounds of russet potatoes that I have peeled, and I've just got them in some water till I'm ready for them because I don't want them to start turning brown. You could use red potatoes, you could use the yellow gold potatoes, Yukons, you could use little fingerling potatoes. For this recipe, you can use any kind of potato you want. I just happen to have the Idaho russets. You will need some fresh dill, a couple of tablespoons. If you don't have fresh dill, you can use um, dried dill in this recipe. It won't be quite the same, but dill does actually dry pretty good. I'm not a real big fan of a lot of dried herbs, but dill is one of them. Oregano is another one that I really do use a lot of dried. A couple of tablespoons or so, use your own judgment, as much or as little as you like. And I'm just gonna start me a little bowl here. We've got some fresh flat leaf parsley that I'm just gonna chop to. You wanna try to get rid of as many of the thicker stems as you can. A few little stems on either one is not gonna hurt anything. And remember how we chop our herbs. Chop through them and then put one end of your knife on the board and work your way through it. Just moving the knife, getting the herbs all together. You can make them as fine as you wish. It adds, uh, parsley adds, a lot of people think that parsley is just really for garnish, but no. It adds flavor as well as a garnish, but it does add a, quite a bit of flavor to it. We're going to put, yeah, I'll just use all that. You want a couple of tablespoons or so of each one. Some salt and some pepper and one onion. This is a little big, so I'm only going to use half of it. This is a Vidalia onion, but you could use any kind of an onion or shallot. If you have a shallot, you could use a little small shallot. This is an, a Vidalia, but you can use any kind of onion you like. You could even use a little red onion if you want. And you want to kind of mince it fine. We're going to roast it in with the potatoes, but I don't want huge chunks of onion. So let's mince it, dice it up, and then you can even run your knife back through it like we did the herbs. You can do that. I do that quite a bit when I want a finer mince. You could use um, onion powder if you don't want to use a fresh onion. You know, if you've got children sometimes, and even in some adults, they don't want to see the chunk of the onion. You can be a little sneaky and puree it up if you want to, or you could just use some onion powder for the flavor. Okay. Now we're going to add that to our bowl. We're also going to zest and juice a couple of lemons. I have washed my lemons. And this is a rasp. And if you'll if, if you've ever if you've got one of these or if you're thinking of getting one, this is a really nice one to have. It's a multi-purpose. You want to lightly feel down so you can tell which way that you want to go because this way is not going to get you anything. But if you go this way, it gets the zest off of your lemon. And you wanna just get the yellow part. You don't wanna get the white. Zest it before you try to juice it because zesting a juiced, or zesting a lemon that you've already juiced is nearly impossible. So always do this first. The zest has so much flavor. You absolutely don't wanna waste the flavor, especially in a dish like this. These are Greek potatoes, and the Greeks use a lot of lemon and a lot of dill. There's a place that I love to go in Florida called Tarpon Springs. Love to spend the day there. It's a little Greek village. There's a restaurant there called Mykonos that, oh my goodness, it is. if you're ever down near Tarpon Springs, it's worth the trip just to go to eat at Mykonos. It's really, really good authentic Greek food and mm, so, so good. 
Okay, just going to cut those in half. If you've got a lemon that has a pretty pointy end on that one side or either side, cut those off. I think you get a little more juice. Might be my imagination, but I, I, I think you get a little more juice when you do that because your little juicer can get down in there. This is one, this has replaced my little reamer. I used to love my little wooden reamer and I still do, but this is the handiest tool and they're available everywhere and it gets every bit of the juice out and it keeps the seeds inside so you don't have to worry about that. And obviously they come in different colors. There's a green one for limes, a yellow one for lemons, and an orange one for oranges. And there you go. That's a quick, easy way to get the juice out of the lemon. And I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to stir this all together. Okay. And you want to set aside about half of this uh, to use at a later date or keep reserve half. Now, the potatoes. What I'm going to do is just cut them into, I don't know, maybe quarter of an inch, third of an inch slices. Just kind of want to make sure you get them all the same size. And place them down in your dish. I have sprayed this dish with non-stick cooking spray. You can line it with foil if you want. Makes easier cleanup. A couple of pounds. If you're using smaller potatoes, you could just cut them in half. Or if you're using the fingerling potatoes, which I'm finding more readily available, leave them whole. They, they get their name because they truly do look like fingers. They're really good, too. Really good roasted. I bet you didn't know potatoes come in so many different. There's purple potatoes, Yukon Golds, the Red Bliss and Idaho russets are the most common. And their differences are, are there. I mean, they're all obviously potatoes, but like the red potatoes are much waxier. A baked potato, you want to russet because it, it gets fluffier. The starch content being different is what makes them taste so different. And if you want to cut your potatoes ahead of time or peel them ahead of time, go right ahead and just put them in water. You know, if you want to do this, oops, the day before, go right ahead and just put them in water in the refrigerator and they will keep. And a little hint for you, if you are a, um, like a kidney patient, if you have problems with your kidneys or you're on dialysis or you need to watch certain contents, if you will put your potatoes, cut them, go ahead and cut them into the whatever shape you want, and soak them for several hours in water, it leaches out the potassium and makes them a little more friendly for kidney patients. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of garlic to this. And I'm just going to go ahead. You can reserve. If you want a little bit fresher of a flavor of garlic, you can add it a little later. But I, I'm going to cook mine. Yeah, I'm only going to use about half of this on my potatoes at this point. Okay. Then I'm going to add some chicken broth, maybe half a cup of chicken broth. We're going to sort of braise these a little bit, not too much chicken broth, maybe half. If you want to, you can add, if you don't like the flavor of raw onion, you could add all of this to your potatoes and bake it. If you don't mind the flavor of raw onion, reserve half and then toss it before serving. Let's just go ahead and add it. Because me, I'm not a fan of raw onion. Some people are. Um, you can do it either way. Either way is fine if you want to reserve some. But if you don't want to do that, then just coat this evenly with that wonderful mixture. Make sure all the potatoes get coated with a little bit of that mixture. And put them in the oven 
and bake them for about 20 to 25 minutes, the same as your chicken. The thing is with these, you wanna make sure they're tender. So we're just gonna pop these in the oven alongside our chicken. I'm gonna take a quick break, clean up. When I come back, we're gonna finish up the asparagus and get that in the oven and then we will try our recipes. I'll be back in just a minute. Now, all I did was put the asparagus, I took it off of the baking sheet and just put it in one of these because I need to fit it in the oven with the other two things. You see how it's got that little tiny bit of caramelization on it? That's exactly what you wanted. I roasted this for 15 minutes. Now we're going to take our onion mixture. And I like to leave the spears, the tops uncovered because I think it looks prettier. And we're just going to take some of this crumb topping or all of this crumb topping because I like the crumb topping and just kind of cover up the bottom half of the spears. Drizzle it with a little bit of oil again just to get the browning on the cheese and the crumbs. Just a little bit, maybe a teaspoon. And put this back in the oven for about five minutes or so until that's golden brown. Now, we put our crumb topping on our asparagus and put it back in the oven for like 10 minutes or so, just until that gets good and crumbly. And the chicken, as you can see, the chicken has baked and it's got this wonderful crumb topping. I would do about two chicken tenders per serving. That is so good. And then there's our asparagus and our potatoes are done. And how you will know they're done is when you insert a paring knife into the center of the potatoes. They're good and tender. The reason for the chicken broth is to kind of soften up the potatoes as well as add flavor. So they're more braised than they are roasted. And they're just simply divine. This pan is really hot, so I wanna be very careful. And also, you know, it, it will come to a simmer and that liquid reduces. And don't forget about that juice that's on there. Now that's part of the wonderful, you know, serving part of the dish. So let's add some of the broth and the wonderful onion and dill and um, parsley that we added. So good. You could totally do these potatoes in a crock pot if you wanted to. But what I would do is like the last 30 minutes or so, take the lid off so some of the moisture can evaporate and the juices kind of condense down a little bit. But there you go, a very, very quick and easy meal. We've got our delicious Italian baked chicken tenders that we just put some Italian purchased bottled sal uh, salad dressing. If you wanna make your own, by all means, go ahead and do that. We lined them with the foil, lined our baking dish, laid our chicken tenders in there, put our dressing on them, and you can let that marinate if you want to, or if you don't have time, you can go ahead and bake it. We mixed up the roasted vegetable flavored crackers. We crumbled those up, mixed it with some Parmesan cheese, salt and pepper, put that on top, drizzled it with oil. In the oven it goes. Start to finish, 30 minutes, and you're done. Our delicious asparagus, we roasted the asparagus with just olive oil, salt and pepper for about 15 minutes. Then we added some of the canned French fried onions with a little Parmesan cheese. Put that on half of the asparagus, drizzled it with olive oil back in the oven 
for about five to 10 minutes just to let that crumb topping brown up. And then our wonderful Greek potatoes, we just used russet potatoes, peeled them and sliced them, chopped some fresh dill, fresh parsley, some salt and some pepper, some garlic, some lemon zest and lemon juice, and a little bit of minced up onion. Put that in our potatoes, roasted those for about 30 minutes, with, or, and we added about half a cup of chicken broth in that, and then we put them in the oven for about 30 minutes until they're nice and tender. Easy, quick dinner that you can make any night of the week, start to finish. You will have dinner on the table in under an hour, even if you have nothing prepped ahead. These are recipes that you can do even on your busiest night. Thank you for joining with me. Hope you try these recipes and let me know what you think. And I will see you next time on Everyday Man. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.